tell me about this house. Point me out. All right. And if you have nice anecdotes about your childhood as the daughter of the artist, okay. then tell me about it. All right. Well, this is the studio. Um, and this, what I was going to talk about, so this studio used to be the carport. This is the slab that the cars were parked on down here. And I think the end wall was somewhere around here. And we drive down and park here. But then they closed that and the cars are out there now. And then he built this balcony out here, which has a great view, except for now the trees have grown up so high it's hard to see it, but we'll take care of that eventually. And right now I'm storing ceramics out there, I'm sorting them. But here uh, is my desk. And you can see there are kind of an interesting variety of pieces of art here. This little head was a for an angel to make a ceramic angel. And I don't know which of my parents did that, but I was going to do the whole body and the clothes and I just didn't get to it. This is a, a really nice thing that my dad made. That's one of his ceramics. And all these are my parents. That's my mom's. The masks are my mom's. That um, portrait of my little brother is my dad. He did that. There's a family photo. I don't know if you want to see that. If that's helpful or not. Nice. Okay, so then odds and ends all around the place. I mean, there are just a million masks. Little teapot, little face. There. Oh, that's again my mom. A lot of my mom's sculpture. This sculpture is my dad. The drawing behind it is my mom's. And then all these little things up here. A lot of them are my mom's pieces. And the um, these were hat blocks. And then my mom made molds and made them out of uh, ceramic. So the old hat blocks were wood. They were used by milliners to make hats, you know. So my parents collected a bunch of those and painted them. And uh, then my mother used the form to make a ceramic and paint them. So like this one, I think, unfortunately got broken. But I think all the ceramic ones are my mom. That's my mom. Sometimes it's hard to tell which is mom's and which is dad's. Oh, I asked you. Did your father make any art, you know, that has some magic in it or a magic hat? And he said, oh, here's a top hat, but it's it's sort of more uh, an, um, another kind, sort of a, a British hat. But again, it does make me feel a little bit about, um, you know, was your father magical? So how did you feel? Was he special? And how did he influence that? Is, is there an influence on your life because of that? Well, he was a very practical, down-to-earth, grounded in the physical kind of person. He was a very good problem solver. So I don't know how I would relate that to magic, only that you might feel that the results he got from the silk screens were sometimes magical. All the layering and the transparencies, that's just a section of one uh, where you see things happen where you get extra shapes because of the overlays and then the textures within each shape. Um, I don't, I don't know. Does that look magical? <laughs> they're, I think they're phantasmical in their way. This dog here is his, um, this vase. Oh, gee, he liked to put naked ladies on things a lot. That's okay. We're going to see the dungeon where the studio started yes where the studio first was and of course you have to look everywhere where you're walking because it is stairs everywhere we're on a hill Ugh. that's why it's built onto the hill see and then there are these wonderful doors with mosaic mosaic Mose oh excuse me excuse my french mosaic tiles that is really bad for recording. And this was my bedroom. This was my little cloister cell. And so there's artwork everywhere. Well, actually, I took 
down. There was artwork everywhere, but now it's basically down. Okay, this was built by your father, tiled yes. by your dad. Yeah, and this was from a uh, addition he he printed on plexiglass. Okay. And he did it as a commission for a hotel. It's in Palm Springs. Well, look at that. We are filming history here. Yes. Anyway. All right. Okay. So this was originally the studio, and then he moved out of here. My mother used it often as a studio. You know, it's totally reconfigured. But then later he built this loft. Because okay. Because to see how high the ceiling is. And this loft became a bedroom. It became actually two bedrooms because there used to be a divider down the middle. Okay. But you see the ladders and both ladders were open to the to each side. And this was my side. I had, this was my sleeping area up here for, or my bedroom basically for a while. For how long? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That remember. must have been hot. Uh, yes. And there was no air conditioning. I've and then there are ceramics, ceramics everywhere. Yes, and an old mask by my mom. Nice. And again, it reminds me of going through my parents' stuff, especially my dad's stuff, because you find the most weirdest things there, so. Yeah, that sounds interesting because it sounds like he was creative. A little nice. ceramic elephant by my mom. So, uh, I don't know, oh, but then this opens out onto the back patio and the old table saw, which I actually still use. I had one guy who was a worker here said, I think that's an antique. Uh, and right. I said, but it works. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, in those days, they made the greatest stuff. Yeah. Okay. So. And it's even hotter out there than it is in here, if you can believe it. I believe it. So this was a piece of masonite that my dad printed on. He actually made, he was making, um, they're kind of like uh, holders, folder holders, not folder holders, print holders. So people could file through them and that was the outside. So he, he silk screen printed on the masonite to make these things when he'd go to an art show. They would put prints that were shrink wrapped into them. Right. Well, then he took two of them and did that and made sliding doors for a cabinet with them. Well, that's handy. Yeah. See, you used, used everything. I know where you got your sustainable streak from. Yeah, this is, I think this is redwood. I, I have a beautiful mid-century uh, sauce, glass sauce that goes on that that's been here from day one. Of course, I'm going to the bathroom to show the toilet paper cubby. Yes, the toilet Because cubby. I think it's so... So where do you put, oh, I see where you put the magazines. Yeah, this was for magazines. Right, I'm using it for toilet paper rolls, but. That's okay. There you go. There you go. Very nice. Into the wall, built right in. And then these interesting windows. Louvers, or some people call them jealousy windows. From the period, inexpensive, but they're not weatherproof at all. And so here, oh no, you cleaned it. Or the funeral, no, they're still there, they just oh. moved. And so the, there oh is God. the funeral of the big Superfly family. Oh my God. Dad. Those are scary. Oh. In the hallway, there's, there are all these built-in cabinets that he made that are built into the space, into the wall. So this is a hallway, it's supposed to be a linen closet, and they made all these drawers. And it's wow. the same paneling as the how, whole hall. How long has he been working on that, on those, on this house? Well, he's been, he worked on it until he couldn't anymore, probably until he was 80 or so. Mm -hmm.